RTF Sports Talk. RTF Sports Talk. RTF Sports Talk. RTF Sports Talk. And now you've got yourself something funky. RTF Sports Talk. All right, welcome to RTF Sports Talk. I am Maka Bakasha, the host of this fine establishment. Joined with today with always Billy Hatton. Billy, how you, how you doing today? Doing all great. Good Sunday morning. Getting ready for a birthday party. My daughter. Oh, happy early birthday to your daughter there. How old is she? She's turning four on Wednesday. So Turning four. So happy early birthday to her. And we're joined today with a special guest, Matthew Lyle. How are you doing today? I am good. Happy birthday to Billy's daughter and ready to get this show rolling. Got some good NFL football coming up today, so excited to talk about it. Well, let's go ahead and oh, get yeah. started. Kansas City Chiefs, Jacksonville Jaguars. I, I, I would have to say this is the per, the premier matchup of the weekend. Uh, Matthew, we'll start with you. Who do you got and why? Um, You know, there's, there's a part of me that I, I guess I'm going to go Chiefs on this one just because they get the home field advantage. But I, I'm really – I'm really flimsy on that. I'm not. I'm not sold on that one by any means. It is, in, like I said, it is in Kansas City. But Patrick Mahomes is facing the best defense that he's faced all season. Uh, you got a little rift between uh, Ramsey and Hill going on out there. Blake Bortles hasn't looked spectacular. He looked pretty decent against a questionable defense when he played New England. And, and I would, I would venture to say Kansas City's isn't much better if it's actually worse. Uh, so. I think Blake Bortles isn't going to get in a situation where he's going to make a lot of mistakes. Now, one thing that is going to be interesting, uh, apparently the weather's pretty bad rain-wise today. Now, that might clear up by kickoff. Um, I still just going to give so many weapons. I'm going to give it to Kansas City here. Now, one thing I do, I, I am very interesting. Of, I know Jalen Ramsey likes to talk Mac, and everything he said was true about Tyreek Hill. But you kind of got you, you get you got rid of your cop out because if he happens to have a good game or he happens to embarrass you, which could happen and it happens to everybody in life, you got they're going to go back and say you didn't get beat by a wide receiver. You got beat by what you just said is a kick return specialist, yep. and that's going to look bad for him. So I, that really has little factor into the game. But with Andy Reid's offense. It comes down – I don't think it comes down to Jalen – if Jalen's with him all day, which I don't know if he will be. It, it comes down less to Jalen's ability to cover and more of Jalen's ability to tackle. Because Andy Reid knows how to get the ball into Tyreek Hill's hands in a way that's unstoppable. Whether it be lining him up in the backfield and he do a, a jet arrow out and you just dump it to him real quick. The, the question is not going to be, can they get the ball in Tyreek Hill's hands or can Jalen Ramsey cover him the entire time? The question is going to be is once Tyreek Hill gets the ball at, at the one-yard line or one-yard end, can Jalen Ramsey then shut it down? Um, so I, I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. I wish the weather was a little better so we could see both those offenses flex. I do like Keelan Cole on the Jaguars. Uh, I think he can make some big plays. But I'm going to go Chiefs slightly, and I'll be honest with you, boys, I could be talked out of it. All right. Uh, well, let me do my best impression of trying to get you – out of that pick. Um, I'm going with the Jacksonville Jaguars for a couple of reasons that you already mentioned. You already said that there may be bad weather. Well, that already favors the Jacksonville Jaguars where it rains every single day in Florida, feels like. Um, and they have the offense built to, to do that. I like Kareem Hunt, but when you talk about giving the ball to Leonard Fournette 30, 40 times a game in a mud fest, I think I like those chances. Leonard Fournette's uh, another out. Thing, that is true. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I still think that favors the uh, the uh, the, um, the 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 Jacksonville Jaguars because their offense is not centered around Blake Bortles swinging around 30, 40 times a game as well as as kind of like how Kansas City uh, does with, with with Pat Mahomes. Two, I think 
every year, you know, we have a breakout star. You know, they, they do incredible things. And Pat Mahomes has been doing incredible things. I believe what he's now up to 14 touchdowns uh, on the year, no touchdowns. Uh, second only only behind Peyton Manning. Um, they all got to have that one game where they come down to earth. You know, last week it was that was kind of there, but he still didn't make make him any mistakes. And at crunch time, he played well. This this week, as you alluded to earlier, Matthew, he that you say this is one of the best defenses that he's played so far. This is the best defense in the NFL right now. They're first in points, first in yards, first in pass yards, 10th in rushing, but they're still allowing under 100 yards rushing. So I think this is the week where they lose, you know, and they, like I say, they play, they play against an aggressive, aggressive defense. And to your Tyreek Hill point, I think Andy Reid is the best at doing that. He will put, as you say, he will put him in the backfield. He'll put him in the slot. He'll line him up directly behind the receiver. He'll put him in that quarterback. He's going to find ways to get, get Jalen Ramsey off him because in this game, Jalen Ramsey never travels. They always just let A.J. Boyd because they, they think that he's a capable corner, you know, and he can do, he, he was an all-pro last year. So uh, I think I think he will have a big day because of all the stuff he do, but I think the Jazz come out and uh, come on top. You know, and there's, there's certain things in life that, that can't be explained, and one of those things, are the Jacksonville Jaguars being undefeated when Leonard Fournette's out? I believe there's something around six and zero now. Uh, that is very interesting to see, and, and maybe they are a little better when they don't have such a, a featured back in the backfield. I, I think just that's think what both, it is. Both these teams have a history of okay, you got our attention. Now show me what you can do, and then letting us down. Uh, so. One person's going to win this game. I actually think, and I think a part of me thinks you hope, it's going to be the Chiefs. hope one person is going to win this game. <laughs> well, I mean, somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to win. Be uh, you're, you're absolutely right, Ty. sir. You are absolutely <laughs> right. So, uh, can, I, can, I, Mike, can I just go for a tie? Do now, for I, it. I don't think that's going to be it. the thing. <laughs> but I do think the Chiefs, I do think, the, the, I think they both are going to let us down. True. But I think the Chief, I think Jacksonville lets us down this week. And then the Chiefs let us down against New England when it's probably going to be on prime time. Um, that is my opinion on that because they're not to go. I'll, I'll put it on that one. We go to the well. We don't all go to the Patriots. No, but I'm I, I, I say, that, you're I, I think too, man. Well, because and, and not to not to the to, to the Patriots, but the Patriots have a way of going. They 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 start two and two, and then when you write them off, they last year they beat up on a little team. And then you're like, okay, are they back? And then when they proved they were back when they slacked uh, Atlanta on primetime TV in week six. I think that's going to be Kansas City next week. This week, though, I think Kansas City gets it done. My only thing is, you're right, uh, they, they don't travel. Um, Ramsey won't travel with his receiver. But I think Kansas City has enough receivers where the outside corners have to respect that. And I would be surprised. Tyreek Hill's pride aside if he lines up on that outside very much. I think you've got Conley, and I think you got Watkins you can put out there, and that will pretty much, with their speed, I'm not saying they're going to dominate, but with their speed, I think that's going to be enough to keep the cornerbacks for the Jacksonville Jaguars um, you know, tied up, just kind of chasing them around all day. Oh, no, you're absolutely say, correct. Because I, I was flip-floppy on this game myself, you know. I just figured this, this, this may be the week where Patrick Mahomes Two weeks in a row, he get to face two good defenses. In that defensive front, we didn't even mention Calais Campbell and, and, and the boys up front. I mean, you know, they 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 have the best one of the best pass rush in all the football too to to go with that back end. Some of the fastest linebackers and Tobin Smith, Jerry Jack. I mean, this defense is for real. But I mean, well, you could be right. Like I said, this this is a toss-up. It was really a toss-up for me, and I really just thought of the Jazz pick. I had wrote down notes for both teams. Right. But then I called you, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to flip it to the Jags. Uh, well, and, and like I, saw Matthew. How the, I saw how Jackson – what? Yeah, I think uh, Sammy S- Sammy Watkins has ruled out for today as well, just uh, FYI. Well, then yeah. I'll put that other – they got, don't they have another guy that they've been throwing to, number 11? Yeah. I, uh-huh. yeah. I just don't – I just, just about don't Chelsea. Think, yeah. yeah, well, I think – and that's what I was going to say. I think if you look at film – 
they, the, the cornerbacks, I, I think the hubris might be what takes down Jacksonville's defense. You got corner, you put your lesser, and I put air quotes around that, you put your lesser wide receivers on the outside. So that takes up the cornerbacks. You take up Bouye and uh, Ramsey. We already saw in the Patriots film what they do to stop a tight end. They're going to put a safety, one of their safeties, and one of their fast linebackers on Kelsey, who is who is arguably as good as Gronk, if not better, depending on who you ask on what day and who's healthiest. So sure. we already we know we know how they're going to stop tight ends. Well, now that leaves a safety and a linebacker getting the ball to covering Hill and Hunt. Now, the only the, the difference maker in this is going to be, and you brought good names with that D line, is what kind of decision making does Patrick Mahomes have? If he if he identifies, because I don't think he identified in the first half versus Denver. If he identifies that I got two seconds max, I think he'll be okay. But if he allows those young feisty defenders to get after and get on him early, it, it could be bad for him. So. The, the biggest thing that's going to come down, in my opinion, to how Patrick Mahomes plays. It, it, he has to realize he's not going to be able to chuck for six touchdowns today. Probably not even going to get two. Maybe one on the ground, one in the air. Much like he did against Denver off the screen. True. If he can, if he can make peace with that, I think they got a good chance to win. If he says, no, nah, I'm going to be the young gun who tests this, a la Brett Favre. Because, yes, he still hasn't thrown an interception. But I thought he could have had two against Denver last week. Yeah, a couple of tips. Yeah, 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 a couple of tips. Right. One, yeah, one went straight up and fell right behind the defender. He, if, he, if it would have been just a little different, he would have had that. So, the ten, I still, I'm still leaning Chiefs on this. But whatever, it, it, it's going to come down a lot to my home. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, two, I think, surprises teams in the AFC the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Miami Dolphins. Blue, let's go ahead and start with you on this one. Who do you got and why? Oh, I've got the Cincinnati Bengals on this one. Uh, I've said this many times on the show about every Florida team in the NFL. I've lived in Florida enough to know that you they may start out good, but it's always going to start getting bad. I have never trust Ryan Tannehill from the beginning of the season. Um, and, you know, I pointed that out, you know, that they hadn't played or beat any any good team at this moment. So, right now, the Cincinnati Bengals is playing some of the best football that, that they can play. And we know in the regular season, the Cincinnati Bengals can get hot. It's in the playoffs where they get a little dicey. It's 0-4 since Andy Dalton has been the quarterback there. But I think this game right here is prime Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Tyler Boyd, that kid has been, it seems like, like that's been one of uh, Dalton's favorite targets. We already know what, what, what A.J. Green can do. So what does the Dolphins second, how can the Dolphins secondary stop the passing attack from, 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 the, uh, from the Bengals? I just don't think it happens. Billy, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. You know, especially with all the rules protecting the offense in the NFL, this, the NFL is almost like just a different version of the NBA. When we talk NBA and you talk who's going to win it, you say, how many all-stars do they have? It, it, that's the conversation you have in the NBA. If they don't have two all-stars, they're not making the playoffs. If you don't have three all-stars, you're not making the Western Conference Finals or the Eastern Conference. If you don't have four all-stars, you're probably not going to win. And I think that's what we're getting with the way the offenses are protected in the NFL. If you don't have three playmakers with a decent quarterback – and a decent secondary man, you don't stand a chance. I look at the Dolphins. I, I wouldn't call I wouldn't call Tannehill decent. I'd call him all right at times. They do have Grant, and they do have that other little buddy. I'm drawing a blank on his name. There are some speedsters, but other than that, I, I don't really see much. Now, when I go to Cincinnati for the first time in, in quite some time, I see things. I see Andy Dalton, who can be all right. I see AJ Green, who is a stud. I see John Ross, who looks healthy. I see Joe Mixon, who, when healthy, can make plays. And, like you said, Boyd is really coming in there and making his own. So the numbers add up. When, when somebody sits around and says, why is the Bengals successful this year? Well, especially with a lot of the rules that are being changed, these numbers are adding up. Miami Dolphins had their chance. We talked about this last week. 
they had their chance to prove things with, by just competing with New England. They couldn't do it. And I think that, especially since New England and them live in the same AFC East house, that was more demoralizing than they think. I think their season begins the downward spiral that everyone thought it would be. Mike alluded to it earlier that they're a surprise team. I think the surprise is over. And I think it starts with Andy Dalton and these weapons taking them apart. And, and look, I, by no means am I saying that the Bengals are a Super Bowl contender or an AFC uh, champion right. contender. And I think that's what's so demoralizing about the Dolphins' downfall is that the, the Cincinnati Bengals are the, your new run-of-the-mill team. And they're going to carve them up. So I, I think it'll be Bengals by quite a bit. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move, move on to the next game on our list here. It is the Baltimore Ravens versus the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Matthew, go ahead and start with you on this one. Who do you got? You know, I, am, am I bought in is the question I'm asking myself. Now, uh, of the last question, the last topic we had, I went through what you needed to win, and I think both teams have a a, a version of that. Um, I think – in the long run, they feel it'll be better than Joe Flacco, but Joe Flacco has better experience. But there's just something around Cleveland. They're celebrating things. They're celebrating not win, but they know this is as close as they've ever been. But at the same time, man, I, they just don't know how to win yet. They had Oakland. They had Chucky back up in a corner choking away lead like he has done all year last week. And it couldn't be done. I think the Browns get painfully close to winning. And, boy, do I mean painfully. Maybe not an overtime game, but I think it's going to come down to like a fourth and one and the play's just not going to get made. And I think Baltimore goes on to win by just a couple. I, Baltimore's probably my least favorite team, and I, and I don't know why. I just don't like them, I guess. It's that but it pains me to say that uh, is it the purple? I, I don't like Terrell Suggs. I don't like Joe Flacco. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just some. Maybe it's just all of it. Um, but I, I, I don't like to say this, but I think even though it, it pains me to say Baltimore is going to hold on to it, they do have Justin Tucker, who's a really good kicker, and you know that might be the difference here for some reason. And I don't know if this would have played any different. It, it all panned out because they missed some and hit some, so they still they still got stuck with 28 points. But for some reason, uh, Buddy for the Browns chose to go for two every time last week. Last week, it didn't make sense to me really, especially since they got the new kicker. I'm going to go Baltimore Ravens by just a hair. Um, if I'm going with my heart over my head, uh, of course, uh, I will be saying the Browns. Uh, at home, maybe that home crowd gets you going. Uh, the excitement to see Baker again. Um, maybe maybe he needs some of that home crowd cooking. But if I'm going my head, I'm, I'm picking the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, so far, they've been playing some of the best football uh, as anyone, you know, in the NFL. Uh, Joe Flacco has been playing good. Uh, eight touchdowns to just two interceptions. You know, they've been controlling the, the ball on the ground with Alex Collins and Buck Allen. Um, you know, John Brown hasn't caught many passes, but the passes that he has caught has been deep and for touchdowns. Uh, so I just think, you know, uh, I, but I like the way my defense has been playing. Uh, the kid that we got out of Ohio State, uh, he's a player. I, I, I really, really like him. Um, but um, I think I think the Baltimore Ravens win this game, uh, and I think experience will take over. And as you said, I think it'll come down to uh, a ball off the foot of uh, Justin Tucker. All righty, guys. So I, I'm surprised of what I'm hearing so far from Billy Hatton today. I, I'm kind of surprised of the way you're going here, but. <laughs> This is going to be your favorite game of the night, Billy. Uh, the Texas Bowl, Texans versus the Cowboys. Who do you got? Yeah, because I know it's going to be on my TV. <laughs> every, oh, my God. Uh, this is the uh, Sunday night game, I, got, I believe. The Sunday night game, yeah. right? Yeah. 
I got Dallas. I got Dallas winning this. Uh, why is this game even the Sunday night game? Seriously, because the Cowboys are amazing. <laughs> the, the Texans and and the Cowboys. I got Dallas winning this. Uh, I think Zeke, Zeke is just too much. Um, I think Zeke is going to be the difference in this game. Uh, I I think Zeke is the reason they win. I think Zeke gets one one fifty, uh, two scores, about twenty six carries. Uh, and I think he he does at home. That Prescott is uh, he have another game where he throws under two hundred yards passing. So I, I think that's the story of it. So I look at these two teams, and even though Dallas isn't by any means leading the division or, or blowing people away, I still think they're overachieving to to a, a standpoint. Um, and I'm not that impressed with their receivers. Zeke is obviously good, but they, they, that line isn't what it once was when they were when anyone was back there running for 2,000 yards. I think Dak has a long way to go to get to where even these younger cats are. Uh, and then I look at the Steelers. I look at the Steelers. I look at the, the Texans. I think they, when I look on paper, they are better than one and three, and you got that one win by a dumb coach call. Like that's, that's only you got that one win. I look at that defense. That defense can can stop Zeke. Now they're questionable in the secondary, but Dallas Cowboys passing game's questionable, so that's going to be all right. Watson, I think that injury's biting him in the butt. You know, we talked last week. Walking stop Patrick Mahomes. There was a lot of this hoopla around Deshaun Watson this time last year. Tears his ACL. Doesn't quite look the same. The receivers, though, can they can can Dallas stop uh, Hopkins? Can they stop Fuller? Depending on how healthy he is, the Coochie kid who stepped up last week really balled out. I scooped him up for my fantasy, trying to to hit some uh, try to, <laughs> capture some lightning in the bottle. I think I think it's going to be a close game. These these uh, prime time Dallas Cowboy games they always find a way to to compete when when America's eyes are on them. But I think this is the one where the Texans start kind of coming to who they are, which is second in that division. I think they're going to compete with Tennessee, who already has a win. I think Jacksonville is the best team in that division. I think Tennessee is just the kind of the most soundest. They kind of know who they are as a team. They're not really great, but they know they're going to win some games. And Texans know who they are. They just don't know how to capture that yet. I think that's what's coming to fruition tonight. I have the Texans winning about three to five points. Uh, I think Dak makes a mistake down late. They, I think uh, a, a play. I, I think there'll be in the fourth quarter there will be a, a call, a play called that takes the balls out of Zeke's hand, takes the ball out of Zeke's hands, puts it in Dak, and Dak makes a mistake and allows the Texans to win. So Billy Hatton going. With I the hope Cowboys. you're right. I hope you're right. <laughs> You know, you, you mentioned the last game, Billy, is, is head versus heart. Uh, maybe that's what this is. Maybe that's what this is up there with. And I, and I, see, so let me, let me set the record straight on this. We're talking about my personal uh, personal feelings on this. For some reason, and I do, I do not know it because I don't know any Ravens fans. I don't like the Ravens. I, I don't know why. I, like the, I don't mind the Cowboys. It's just the Cowboys fans. That I, I enjoy seeing be miserable. Yeah, but that's 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 who makes it so hard for me. That the fans they make me hate the team. Is yeah, it's. How I, about them I hate Cowboys? Cowboy fans. Wor, wor, worst fans in America. All right, guys, and let's move on to the Monday night game: Saints versus Redskins. Uh, Billy, go ahead and start with you on this one. Now, this game right here was. I went back and forth. Uh, on who, who on on who I was going to pick in this game, I like Washington's rushing uh, attack right now. Adrian Peterson, Chris Thompson, they're fifth in rushing right now uh, in the NFL. Who would have thought this Washington team would be would be you know top five in rushing at 137 yards per game? Uh, you know uh, the defense is, is start is starting to come along. They they they're coming off of a bye week. Uh, when they uh, where the Saints is is kind of you know they had some some tough games uh, they rested so uh, I'm gonna go with the Redskins I think the Redskins win this game uh, 
I told I told Matthew uh, before we uh, started that I, I texted uh, I texted Chris and uh, I said I can feel a a, a Wake Forest game uh, coming along and he said uh, yeah I, I I can feel that too I think he has a, a big game today uh, last year he, he he broke his ankle against the Saints uh, I think I, I I think he come back and have a, a pretty good game uh, over 100 yards uh, catching probably two touchdowns I'm going with the Redskins. You know, I'm right there with with Chris's big game, but I also look at the other side. I look at what the the Saints have. Drew Brees is just a little over 200 yards away from passing Peyton Manning. It's all time uh, passing yardage. He's got Alvin Kamara. I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they get Ingram back this week. Michael Thomas is, is balling out, leading the league in receptions. I yeah, think he's not messing Alvin, around. I think Chris is going to have a big game, and that defense is going to allow for a big game. In addition to his skill, that defense, Chris Thompson is going to have a big game. My question is, who else? Who else is going to dominate? Because I don't know if Alex Smith is going to be enough. Is it going to be Adrian Peterson? Is it going to be Crowder? Is it going to be one of those other receivers? Is it going to be somebody we don't know, which that tends to be in fantasy and or in football this year? I, I don't know, but and that's the part that makes this uneasy for me. I look at the, the numbers just add up. I look at the Saints, and I can tell you at least three to four people that's probably going to ball out. I look at the Redskins, and I can name you one person that's going to ball out, and I struggle to find that second and third. So with that being said, I'm giving the edge and the win to the Saints. And also, just to oh, yeah. add, also to add some hype to this game, I think uh, Drew Brees only needs two more touchdowns to get 500, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Since Brady got it on Thursday night, I, I, I like I think Brees is only two or three away, if I'm not mistaken, like as well. So yeah, see, this game, this game wasn't wasn't easy for me to pick because on my sheet here. I got the Saints circle. You know, I, I switched that right in the middle of uh, while I was uh, saying why I like the Redskins in this game. It could it could most definitely be a blowout. Uh, I mean, that that offense that Breeze and Sean Payton run down there in New Orleans, uh, it works. You know, uh, Sean Payton is one of the great offensive minds in all in all the football, uh, and uh, he find ways to get. Um, to get guys open and get guys uh, making plays. So, uh, I mean, I, I, it could definitely be the Saints by a lot, but hard overhead on this one, I'm going Redskins. All righty, guys. So we got the uh, five top games out of the way here. So let's go ahead and do some quick pick here. We're just going to go straight down the list, and if you guys could just give me a quick team answer so we can keep the show moving along here. Like, all right. So first up on the list, we got Broncos and Jets. Who do you got, Matthew? We'll go ahead and start start with you on like all these, and then end with Billy. Uh, I'm going to go Broncos. I, I think they they felt like they played pretty nice last week, and they let themselves down. And I think they bounced back this week. Uh, I, I agree. I think the Broncos uh, win this game. Uh, they they get the Sam Darnold maybe throw two picks. I like the Broncos. All right, now we're going to jump over to the Black and Blue Division: Packers and Lions. Matthew. Uh, I go Packers. No, no matter what the name on the jersey says, I always tend to like Green Bay over Detroit. They got Aaron Rodgers, and you can't put anything past that man. I got Packers. I got Packers as well. Aaron Rodgers have a big day. Devontae Adams uh, and the boys. Jimmy Graham scores two touchdowns today. All right. Then we got the D football New York Giants versus the Carolina Panthers. Uh, let me go Panthers. I, I don't know where the Giants are going to find the offense. Barkley looks decent. They can't protect Eli. Odell hasn't found the end zone. And Cam Newton, like we talked uh, many moons ago, is, is playing better with the flu of receivers this year. So give me the Panthers. Panthers as well. For every single reason that uh, Matthew just made it, I, I'm not even going to say anything. All righty. Uh, Tennessee Titans, Buffalo Bills. I got the Titans choking on this one. I think at Buffalo, I think they, they find what they roughly had against Minnesota. Probably won't be as dominant, but I got the Bills winning. I got the Titans on this one. Uh, I, I think I think Mariota have a have a big day. The Bills defense, what are they? 
Uh, we'll see. I think I got the Titans. And as River goes to sleep here, uh, next up you got Atlanta Falcons, Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Falcons have been knocking on that door, and I'm not been impressed by what I see with the Steelers. I think the Falcons find a way to get it done in a high scoring game. I also got the Falcons. Uh, Matt Ryan has played, you know, absolutely amazing. Ten touchdowns, two interceptions. I think they win it today. All right, and then next up, uh, is it Las Vegas yet on the Oakland Raiders? I I think they're still Oakland uh, for right now. Okay, so uh, oh, it's the it's the Oakland Raiders versus San Diego Chargers. Who do you guys got? Well, I got the L.A. Chargers on this one. I think uh, the Chargers will let the Raiders be close, but the Raiders definitely find a way to choke it away. I think the Chargers and Drew, and uh, Philip Rivers gets it done. Uh, yeah, I got the Chargers as well. Uh, Raiders should be uh, on four right now, but that's okay. My Browns choked it away. Uh, I got the Chargers. And a, uh, rematch, a rematch of uh, the Vikings and Eagles. You know, I, I think this is probably going to be one of the better games. I think uh, the Eagles are just the better team at home coming off a shocking loss versus the Titans. I think they find a way to get it done. Uh, I got the Vikings on this one. I think I, I think that they um I think that Kirk Cousins number are close. Uh, I think that defense started to get better. Once that defense get better, I think they'll be on the road. I think this is a good week to start. Let me Vikings. ask you let me ask you guys a quick question on this game. If the Eagles lose this game, is it time to panic in Philly? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, no, I wouldn't say panic, especially not in, in the NFC East. Anybody can win that division. So, no, nah, panic, no. All right. Next up, uh, 425 game, got Rams and Seahawks. Uh, I'm on Rams. They, they got much better offense, a lot of firepower, and really the only guy on Seattle that could have stopped it broke his leg last week. Uh, I agree. Uh, best offense in football, um, 4-0. What is Seattle? What is Russell Wilson? Uh, Rams big. And uh, probably the worst game in the NFL so far this year, Cardinals and 49ers. <laughs> Man, who, who who cares? Whoever <laughs> finds a way to not lose it. Uh, I actually, I'm going to put a little faith in Josh Rosen. I, I, there's something tells me that Kittle's going to have about 30 catches, but I think Josh Rosen finds a way to get a win. Um, shoot. Um. Any, many, mighty, mo. Uh, yeah, I, I'm guessing Josh Rosen to get his first win today. Alrighty, guys. Like I, I want to root for the 49ers so bad on the lot, like on this game to bring back my early childhood, like when it was the Cowboys and 49ers and Packers always in the NFC Championship games they were fighting. But yeah, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so guys, it's, as, a shame, it's a shame that's the last game you made it, man. It looks like we're going to end the show with a bad day. <laughs> well, yeah. that's just the way it rolled yeah. out. That's the last four twenty-five game, and we already went through the Sunday night game, Monday night game. So, but we aren't going to end it yet, guys. So, final take, Matthew Lyle. You got three good minutes. Three good minutes, man. I don't know if I have three good minutes of anything in me right now. Um, it, it, it's just been it's, been, it's been a great fourth season so far. Uh, my teams have been very successful. Uh, you know what? That's going to be my take. I'm, I'm making a take. I've inspired myself. Bandwagon 101. <laughs> Let me tell you what it takes to be a great bandwagon fan. Actually, you know what it takes to be a great bandwagon fan. You sit back, and just like any business, you watch, and you say, hey, this is going to be pretty decent. You watch, you, you invest a little bit of time in it. And then you say, you know what, I'm going all in. Now, I've not really got to flex my bandwagon muscle very much. Uh, I came up being a Patriots fan off of a 1997 Madden game I got from Pizza Hut. Uh, the only two games you could play was the Packers and the Patriots. I liked the Patriots. And then two years later, they were in the Super Bowl. So I was like, hey, I'm going to follow this thing. Thankfully, Tom Brady is a legend, and it hasn't made me change. NBA, I've been all over the place. I was an Iverson, a T-Mac fan, just because I like their shoes. Then I said, hey, I like this KD cat. And then I like what the Golden State Warriors did. Then they merged into one. So I'm riding this boat pretty strong. They saw, <laughs> man, I'll, I'll follow that with long. But the reason I decided to go on this little tangent is everyone likes to ridicule me for that. And I'll embrace it. I'll, I'll embrace what it is. But with a part, I don't understand where I'm getting the ridicule from. 
sports is the only thing you would ridicule me for doing that. If if you saw me with an iPhone, you wouldn't say a word to me unless you didn't like iPhone. But for the most part, you wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say the thing to me. Apple twenty years ago wasn't Apple. It was Microsoft. It was, it was a Microsoft. It was BlackBerry. It was Nokia. You, I don't. Once one brand stops putting out a quality product, you don't ride with that brand forever. I don't see people still rocking their old Zoom. I don't see people texting on their BlackBerry. No, <laughs> BlackBerry and Microsoft stopped putting out a good product in that area. So you go to a new company who's putting out a better product. That's life. You just move on. I guarantee you, unless you have an old TV in your house, you probably don't have an RCA TV. You have Vizio. Vizio wasn't around 10, 15, 20 years ago. RCA was the was the game changer in, in TV. But they stopped putting out a good product. Here came Vizio, great product, cheaper to buy. You went and bought it. Same thing goes really with everything. Uh, Puma's trying to get back into the game, but that's because people stopped buying them because they stopped putting out a good product. It's only in sports where if your company, because let's be real, that's what sports is, it's a business, your company puts out a crap or below standard product and you're expected to still support and buy that company? I uh, Not me. Not me. I will ride with Microsoft when I like their Zoom and I like what they're giving me. But the moment they drop the ball, I'm moving somewhere else. Or the moment that someone else gives me equal quality but at a cheaper or less or more convenient way, I'm going to start consuming that product. So sports, which I said is a business to me, I'm going to ride with the best company that produces the best product that is the easiest for me to consume. As of right now, now I will always ride with my UK Big Blue Nation, but when it comes to protein, which is a business, let's be real, we are not hiding that from anybody. If you want me to be behind your team, you got to give me a good product that can be easily consumed. And as of right now, I don't think anyone can argue that the Patriots and the Warriors have done the best job of giving you that. All right. Billy Hatton, your turn, son. Billy Hatton. He's speechless, Matthew. Speechless. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I was talking. I was talking. I guess my phone had went on mute for some reason. But, uh, I was saying, I don't know if I even have three minutes. But um, I'm just going to say my Seminoles choked away a 20-point lead yesterday to Miami, a team that hadn't beat us in Miami since 2004. Um, This marks two years in a row that we lost to Miami. Uh, Now my only hope is uh, come November we don't lose to Florida Um, because that team seems to be uh, rolling right now. Um, God, that hurt it even giving any credit to them. Um, but we in trouble right now. We're three and three. Um, the refs took away a touchdown yesterday, but I'm not going to cry over spilled milk. Uh, make sure you guys follow the Unpopular Opinion Twitter and Facebook page at Unpopular Opinion 2018. Uh I'm on Spreaker live every single uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 12 noon, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, special guest Tuesday and Thursday on Anchor. Uh, go subscribe to the podcast. It, and all those links are in the description below, guys. And as always, thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning 945 show. Uh, we are live every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, 11 o'clock mountain time and Billy's time zone there uh, like I said thanks for uh, following us here be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel also join us if you're listening to us on Spotify Apple Apple podcast iTunes like etc be sure to give that podcast a follow as well and we'll catch you guys on Tuesday have a good have a good day <laughs>